My name is Bluehead. It's October 29th. I think you all know what today's about. We've got Hurricane Sandy coming up from the southeast. And we've got two weather systems to our north and west, respectively, east and west. And they're squeezing in on us. These two systems, one of them feeding Canadian cold air, is going to collide with Sandy right around midtown Manhattan and within a 40 mile radius of that ground zero center. The storm surge that we expect because we live here is going to be significantly higher than anything we've seen in our lifetimes. There was an event in 1955 which brought floodwaters into my hometown in Norwalk. And at that moment, I was in the hospital being born. Thank God the hospital in Norwalk is way up on the hill. In fact, that was the nickname for going to the hospital, up on the hill. Big complex, way up on the hill, above the floodwater zones. So thankfully, they got my Sasquatch butt out of there with my mom, thank God, for her anyway. And something's happening right now. Something meteoric, something celestial. I don't know what it is, but something is happening. And I wonder, I just wonder, and this is not extremist, delusional, conspiracy thinking. This is just common sense curiosity. What kind of a time is better to take advantage of this nation at its heartbeat? The dragon lives in lower Manhattan. The dragon being Wall Street, the Federal Reserve, the New York Federal Reserve, all of our financial infrastructure, the countries and the globes. Well, Manhattan is an island, for those of you who haven't been east. And Mayor B Bloomberg got on the radio this morning, or on the TV, on you know, one of my screens, and said, get away from the water. Well, I didn't know how to break it to him, but he lives on an island. Where are they going to put 8 million people, number one? Between the five boroughs and Manhattan, you've got 8 million people. Where are they going to go? Here? My home? Well, I'll take as many as I can fit on my compound. It's quite large. But there's really nowhere for them to go because the highways are running adjacent to the coastal areas and they're going to get flooded and shut down. But that's not really my point. Everyone's pretty much on their own and each family will be taking care of themselves and each other and friends. I know I rode up and down the street last night passing out leaflets to my neighbors that we have backup generation. We have a million gallons of reserve water. We have food. We have virtually anything they would need. We've got bedrooms and shelter and resources if they need it. So I hope my neighbors hold on and nothing happened significantly, but I just witnessed the first time I have a little lake on my property and there's a water spout and it took out my favorite tree on my entire 50 acre spread. It took out a willow tree that's four feet in diameter. It's a weeping willow. Well, it's down. It's been standing there for as long as I've been on this compound, which is close to 20 years. And I'm going to miss my tree. But more importantly, what better time for the people who hate us to take advantage of the chaos that comes amidst one of these events? It's too late for them to plan for it now. So I don't feel that I'm jeopardizing anything if someone happens to hear this and says, oh, let's go do something dastardly. Chances are they don't have the maritime resources to pull it together that fast in gale force winds. And being an oceanic, experienced oceanic navigator, 
there's no way they're going to get that kind of resource together unless they've been planning. And that's the only way it can happen is if they've been planning. But let's keep our ear to the wall. Let's keep our eyes around. Let's make our situational awareness extremely acute. Look around you. Protect your family, your children, your parents first. Make them safe. Make them safe first. And then keep your eyes peeled for anything unusual. Anything. And I hope you're prepared. I know I am. At least to the extent I can be. But prepare yourselves and take care of your families. And keep your eyes peeled for our country. Because we're in a chaotic moment between now and I'm going to say around tomorrow afternoon. I've been in big weather offshore. I've been in big weather onshore. I was offshore, or at least on the coastal zone, in a boat during the gale of 91, the perfect storm. A good friend of mine and I were in Cape May, New Jersey. And during that benign event, it was a benign event compared to what they're predicting here, three 100-foot steel boats sank in Cape May Harbor sank in the inlet. So don't take this too lightly. Mother Nature is relentless and unstoppable. That's a fact. There is nothing in our power to stop her from raging. So just hold on and I think you'll get through that part. But if there are malevolent forces about and they're trying to do us harm. This would be a good time for them to take advantage of the chaos. Again, if they haven't planned with very sophisticated equipment and resources, they can't get it done because they're fighting the same turmoil that we're fighting. The seas, the wind, the absence of power. All of these things can be portableized, though. I know what we have for resources as a country, but I don't know what they have. I'm hoping and praying to my Lord Jesus Christ that they have our people, our ha that, that our people have an eye on that ball, on that ball. Wherever they are, whatever they're doing, today would be the day to do it. Don't forget, tomorrow is also the anniversary of the 29 stock market, stock market crash. Very auspicious. Very auspicious indeed. Please stay tuned.